bless you, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor. We worship and adore you. Oh, you are the Lord Almighty. You are the Most High God. You are the Lord, our Master. You are the Lord Jehovah. The Lord, our Savior. You are the Lord, our banner. You are everything that the world can see concerning us. You are the Lord, our shepherd. You are the Lord that leads us. You are the Lord, our healer. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that heals. You are Jehovah Shema. The Lord that is always there. Our present help in time of need. Oh, the Lord Shukadu. Man lemen lemelakuse. I lebron nangamarise. Oh, you are always there. Maki pronange maradia. In time of trouble, you are there. In time of joy, you are there. Mola kapredi patelaba. You are the Lord that sanctifies us. You are the Lord everlasting. You are our God. You are our God. You are our God. You are our God. You are our peace. You are our dependence. You are our life. In the name of Jesus Christ. All thanks be to God. All thanks be to God. All thanks be to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Precious Jesus. Oh, Shaka Bradibede. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. For the Lord is good, and his mercies endures forever. Oh, the Lord is good, and his mercies endures forever. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting Lord. Yes, I greet you all. Thank you for joining in this morning. I want to share the word of God with you this morning and uh, uh, straight away, straight away I want to go uh, and we are looking at living by the Spirit, living by the Spirit. Hallelujah. It is important to understand in life that there is more to life than food. There is more to life than the natural things that we see around us. There is more to life than what humanity can offer us. There is more to life than human effort. Throughout eternity, men and women have witnessed the power of God. And God is real. He does exist. And he is a spirit. In the book of John chapter 1, when you read verse 12, he says, And as many as believed in him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God.
to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So they were human beings, but he gives them the power. He gives these human beings the power to become the sons of God. And you are, if, you, if you're to follow me, you may understand that in John chapter 4 and verses 24, the word of God lets us know that God is spirit. Hallelujah. God is spirit. He is spirit. So God is a spiritual personality. When we talk about God, he's a spiritual personality. And now he says, as many as believed in him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. To become the sons of God. Meaning they will carry the attributes of the spirit. So as a child of God, as a born again Christian, as, a, as, as one who confesses Jesus Christ as his Lord, he tells us that we are required to live as children of the Spirit of God. For God is spirit. We bear in us a nature beyond human ability. We bear in us a nature beyond the physical realm. We bear in us a nature beyond... Uh, the, 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 the physical things that we see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so today as we talk about living by the Spirit, I want to talk about the works of the Holy Spirit. All right? I want to talk about the works of the Holy Spirit. You see, what can the Holy Spirit do? What has he done? And what is he going to do? When we became born again, something happened to us. We became children of God. We became children of the Spirit of God. We became children of a God who is Spirit. And the Bible tells us in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, he, he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. You see, it does not say that if any man is in Christ, he ought to become a new creature. No, he does not say that if any man be in Christ, he ought to become a new creature. No, if any man, if anybody has believed in Jesus Christ and so he's in Christ he is a new creature I will say this one more time please understand that the Bible does not tell us that if any man be in Christ Jesus he ought to become a new creature no it does not tell us that and all things ought to pass away no it does not say that if any man is in Christ Jesus, he feels like a new creature. No. This is, not, this is not a conversation about feeling. This is not a conversation about what things ought to be. No, 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 no. He does no, no does that tell us that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he ought to like to act like a new creature. No. It does not say that the old things will eventually pass away. It does not say that it, then eventually new things will come. No, it says if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, see, the word there behold means to see, see that all things are become new. All things have become new. They have become they are, they are not going to be. They don't ought to be. They have become child of God. There is more to you as a Christian. There is more to you as a child of God than what you see in the natural realm. He says, all things have become new. There is something that you became when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. There is something that you became when the Holy Spirit came on the inside of you.
These statements are absolute. They are legal. They are already accomplished facts. They, what I have just said refers to a positional reality. It does not refer to, 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 to what you want to become. No, 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 no. Some of you look at your lives and you see certain things in your life and you don't like them. And you're saying, I want to become. No, 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 no. This is a positional facts. In the mind of God, this is God's mind about you. This is what he knows about you. This is what he thinks about you. When we believe in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit instantly performs certain irrevocable works in us. When we believe in Jesus Christ, he, start, he, 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 he works a work that is unchangeable. Don't you remember he said, as many as believed in him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. For God so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten son, that anybody who believes in him shall not perish, but shall have an everlasting life. The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is an everlasting work. It is an absolute work. It is a work that is not about to change. Praise the Lord. And so that is the work that I want to describe to you. And the first one is our baptism. Our baptism. Praise the name of the living God. To baptize means to immerse, to seek, to soak in. You know, you know like the way you soak a cloth in water? You know like a way, the way you soak maybe a towel in water? Before you soak it in, probably it is dry. All right? But when you soak it in, it come, it, the water gets into it. All right? If the water was brown, maybe it was dirty and it was brown and it was a, and it was a white towel, uh, you will understand that the moment you soak that towel into that brown water or that dirty water, when you bring out the towel, the towel will contain attributes of that water. Now, Jesus told us in the book of Matthew chapter 28 and verses 19 to 20, he said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, soaking them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. He told us to go and preach the gospel. But as the gospel came to us, he said, as the gospel would be going out, he said, this is what it will be doing. It will be soaking men and women in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, if you're looking for that man, if you're looking for that woman, you will find them soaked in the name of Jesus Christ. Soaked in the Father. Soaked in the Holy Spirit. And that man will not be the same man. He will now be carrying the attributes of the Father. Like a towel soaked in brown water. A white towel soaked in brown water. It will be carrying the attributes of that brown water. It will look brown. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, the moment the word of God came to you, the moment the gospel came to you, and uh, you heard it and believed it, the Holy Spirit did a work in your life. And that work was to immerse you. That work was to soak you. That work was to baptize you. 
So if anybody was looking for you at that moment, they would only find you baptized in the name of the Father, baptized in the name of the Son, baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit, soaked, soaked in the Father, soaked in the Holy Spirit, soaked in the Son. But, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you must recognize that we have been blessed now to become a part of God forever. We've been blessed to become now a part of the body of Christ forever. Oh, First Corinthians chapter 1, rather chapter 12 and verses 13. I will read for you, for those of you who are maybe... Uh, following Shela Bradegeba. Chapter 12 and verses 13. Hear what the word of God says. He says, by one spirit, we were all soaked into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, all have been made to drink, to be soaked into the spirit. Praise the name of the living God. He says, by one spirit, by the Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. We were all, we were all placed and soaked into one body called God, called the Trinity. Called the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if anybody is looking for you, if anybody can bewitch you, oh, malaka baradi sabah, they are bewitching a man and a woman in the safest place. If anybody wants to curse you, they are trying to cast a man and the woman in the safest place possible, soaked in God, soaked in the presence of God, soaked in the life of God, soaked in the body of God, soaked in Christ, soaked in the Father, soaked we've been covered <laughs> remember I told you that these statements are absolute this is a work that God has done this is not something that he is going to do realize he says by one spirit we were it is past tense we were soaked You know all these songs that we sing? Take me to the place, Lord, to the secret place. Where, uh, no, 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 no. See, child of God, we are there. We can no longer be taken there because we have been placed there. This is where we live. We are in that secret place. Take me deeper. That is where we are. And what can happen is for us to be taken deeper in that place. To be soaked more in that place. But we are there. When we are talking about take me to the place, Lord, to the secret, we, 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 you, 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 you may be trying to say what I think you, you're trying to say is, uh, please help me understand more this place where you've put me. Rather than God is somewhere and you, you're on the other side. No, 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 no. You're not somewhere and God is somewhere also. No, we are been baptized into one body. We have been all made to drink into one spirit. Praise the name of the living God. You see, this gives us a new position spiritually. This gives us an understanding that we are not ordinary. We are not what people see. We go beyond that. This gives us a new spiritual 
reality concerning our position in this life. Concerning where we are in this life. I don't know where you see yourself. Maybe you see your, you've been seeing yourself in failure. No, child of God. That is what the devil has made you to see. Maybe you're seeing yourself in impossibilities. Child of God, that is what the devil has made you to see. Maybe you see yourself having come from that poor family. Maybe you see yourself as one who belongs. No, 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 no. That is not who you are. You are more than that. You're in an advantageous position. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. David said in the book of Psalms, Oh, glory to God. David said in the book of Psalms chapter 16, and verse 6, he says, the lines of boundary, have my, the, the lines of my boundary have fallen in me in pleasant places. He says, the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. He says, the lines of my boundary have fallen in a pleasant place. So if you're to draw my boundary, if you have to find my boundary, you will find it in a pleasant place. He says, and because of that now, I have a godly heritage. I have a good heritage. You see, the moment you were blessed in Christ, the moment you were blessed in the Father, in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit, you were blessed in a place of advantage. Child of God, you're not disadvantaged. You are not without help. You see, before we came to Jesus Christ, we were at disadvantage. Our boundary was defined with curses. Our boundaries, our life was defined with misfortune. Our boundary was defined with lack. We were unsure. It was defined by death. Before we believed in Jesus Christ, we were dead in Adam. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of Romans. Chapter 6. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. He says, Oh, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, were baptized into as many of us that were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, verses 4, therefore we were buried with him through the baptism into his death that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of God, even so we should walk in the newness of life. He says, when Jesus Christ died, we died with him. When he was buried, we were buried together with him. When he was raised up, we were raised up together with him. So everything that had a right over us because of the sin of Adam no longer has a right over us because that man that was under a curse, that man that was disadvantaged, that man that was affected by the sin of Adam, the Bible says that that man was baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. He was completely soaked in the death of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ died, that man died with him. The sinful man died with him. The disadvantaged man 
died with Jesus Christ on the cross. And when Jesus Christ was resurrected as a new man, yes, even you, you were resurrected together with him as a new man. That is why he says that, behold, if any man be in Christ, Jesus is a new creation. Because the other man that was a sinner died, the other man that was carrying the nature of sin, the sin of Adam died, but now a new man has been raised in Christ Jesus. You are no longer what your mother gave birth to. I'm going to expound on that more when I'm talking about the regeneration work of the Holy Spirit, our new life in Christ. But you are no longer that woman that your father gave to. You see, the Bible says, uh, David said, that in sin I was conceived. In sin I was conceived. You see, when we were born into this world, we were born with the nature of sin of Adam. But Jesus Christ died for us on the cross. And the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5. In verse 6 he says, For when we were still without strength, when we were dead, when we were dead, when we were carrying the nature of sin, when we were carrying the nature of Ad the Adamic sin, he says, while we were still sinners, Endure without strength, unable to see the blessing of God, unable to do anything for our lives. He says, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. In verses 86, but God demonstrates his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so in chapter 6, verses 4, he says, therefore we were buried with him. When he died, we died with him. And so when we, we, he was buried, we were buried together with him. Let me show you something here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All thanks be to God. We are talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 15 he says he died for all verses 14 he says for the love of Christ compels us it tells us it pushes us to understand that because we thus judge that if one died for all then all died so some of you have been listening to certain radio programs telling you you are cursed, telling you uh, uh, the, 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 the demons of your, 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 your clan, your, your, your clan uh, 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 the ones that are, uh, they, 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 they are responsible for you and uh, you need to break. No, 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 no. The, the, the breaking was done by the Holy Spirit. The breaking was done done by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. The breaking of those curses. He says, we now understand that if one died, if Jesus Christ died, then all died. All of us died in him. So we are no longer carriers. We are no longer those sinners. We are no longer carrying the Adamic sin. We are carriers of the new life in Jesus Christ. We have been soaked in the life of Jesus Christ. And now we have been seated together with him in heavenly places. We are no longer in the domain of darkness. We are no longer in the, in the, in, in the control of the power of the enemy. We no longer belong to darkness. We no longer belong to this world. We no longer belong to that clan. We no longer belong to that family of, 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 uh, of the ones who are cursed. No. Ephesians chapter 2. And that verses 4 to 7. He says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, even when we were dead in our sins, that is past tense, made us alive together with Christ. Made us also that is past tense. So there was a time we were dead in our sins, but then he made us alive in Jesus Christ. By grace we have been saved through faith. 
and being raised up together with him. Remember, I told you when he was, when he died, we died with him. When he was buried, we were buried together with him. When he was raised, we were raised together with him. So he says, he says, and raised us together with him. And has made us sit, has made us, is not going, <laughs> I want you to recognize the tenses he uses. He says, and has raised us together with him and has made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. Child of God, you are not where the devil can meet you. <laughs> you no, you're no longer where the devil can curse you. <laughs> you are no longer where men can oppress you. You are positioned in a place above above principalities, above powers, above dominions. He says, and he has raised up together with him and they made us sit together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace towards his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. By grace we have been saved through faith, not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We have been seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Your physical body may be here. But the Holy Spirit has worked a work that your spirit, the real you, has been placed to sit in glory. Has been placed to sit in a place of honor. David says, the lines are falling on me, on me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage. If you are to open your spiritual eyes and see where you are in God, I can tell you, you are in a pleasant place. If you can open your spiritual eyes, if you can see what the word of God is saying, if you will open your spiritual eyes and you see what God has done in your life, you will understand that you are not disadvantaged. Oh, Makalabra de Gaba. Some of you keep saying this, the, these statements. What a hell. What a what. No, 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 no. It is not what a hell. It is what a heaven. Thanks be to God. You are not disadvantaged, child of God. Colossians. Maybe you, you've not understand that. Let me show you. Colossians. Chapter 3. Oh, Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 4. Listen to what he says. He says, if then you were raised with Christ, not we are going to be raised. We were already raised with Christ. He says, now our focus should be, he says, if you were then raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting. sitting at the right hand of God. He says, if we have, if we died with him and we were raised together with him and have been raised to sit together with him in heavenly places, just like I've said, he says, now our focus, he says, now we should seek those things which are above. Our focus should be on the power of God. Our focus should be on the goodness of God. Our focus should be on the miracle working power of God. We should set our gaze. We should set our focus on those things which are above. We should forget, we should set our focus on healing. We should set our focus on prosperity for God's sake. For the word of God says that in heavenly places, God is pleased. God finds pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Our focus should be on what God wants to perform in our lives. Set your focus. On the things above. Where Christ is saying, sitting. Rather than setting your focus on what the devil is doing here. Can you see God healing your family? Can you see God saving your husband? Can you see God restoring your marriage? Can you see God raising your children? 
Can you see God blessing your business? Because the, every other opposite of that is the work of the enemy. And that is what the enemy is doing here on earth. He says, don't focus on what the enemy is doing. He says, set your focus. Seek those things which are above. He said, set your mind, verses 2. He says, set your minds on the things above, not on the things on the earth. When you look around you, when you see what is happening in, on the earth, they are sad stories. When you watch TV and you watch the news on CNN, on the local channels, on, uh, when you watch, you see, all you see is trouble. All you will see is things that are causing you to fear. All you will see is disease. All you will see is injustice. Things that will cause you to be worried. But that should not be your focus. Now turn your gaze. He says set your mind on the things above. Not on the things that are happening on the earth. Maybe everyone around you on earth is going down. Maybe everyone around you on earth is discouraged. Maybe everyone around you on earth is losing. Maybe everyone around you on earth is making losses. Maybe everyone on earth is Everyone around you is being fired. Maybe everyone around you is lacking. Maybe everyone around you is, uh, is unemployed. Maybe everyone around you is having trouble in their marriage. Maybe everyone around you is having trouble in their relationships. Maybe everyone around you is not sure. Maybe everyone around you is unbelieving. Maybe everyone around you on earth that you see lacks faith. Maybe everyone around you has weaknesses. Maybe everyone around you is lying. He says, now if that is what is happening on the earth, sit your minds on the things above not on the things on the earth maybe all you see in your family is limitation is failure is misfortune evidence of curses people dying at a young age all you see is witchcraft all you see is hate and jealousy. People killing each other. People hating on each other. He says that needs to change. Now that you've been raised with Jesus Christ. Now that you are a child of God. Now that you've received the newness of life. He says now your focus should change. There is something more that is happening beyond what you're seeing in your family. There is something more that God is doing than what you're seeing the devil do in your business. There is something more that, the, that God is is doing more than what you see the devil doing in your partner. There is something more than, than, than what the doctors have said is happening to your body. There is something more that God is doing in your life and wants to do in your life. He says, set your mind on the things above and not on the things below. Did he not say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? The rightness of things in God. His kingdom. The dominion of God. The control of God. Seek the control of God. Set your, minds on, set your mind on the things which God is in control in, of. Set your mind on the things that God has dominated. Talk about healing. God has dominated the healing world. Oh, I cannot tell you how many people have been healed of ulcers. I cannot tell you of how many people the power of God has touched and healed of tumors and healed of fibroid. I can oh my color. When we talk about the healing business, he supersedes. He's number one. He has done it better. He's the only one with a record of healing everyone that was brought to him the Bible says on different occasions the Bible says and he healed them all <laughs> so when he says seek your first the kingdom of God he's trying to tell you seek your first where the king is in dominion when we talk about Christ Jesus we talk about healing. When we talk about Christ Jesus, we talk about blind eyes being open. When we talk about Christ Jesus, we talk about deaf ears being open. When we talk about Christ Jesus, we talk about miracles of multiplication. Oh, the power of provision. We talk about him feeding 5,000. And he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He has not changed. 
those same miracles. No man had ever divided water. But the Bible records how God oh, divided the Red Sea while Aoma, it had never been witnessed. The children of Israel had never seen it. Uh, Pharaoh had never seen it. And so when he was chasing after them and he saw the Red Sea, he knew they were done. But he did not know this God. And the Bible says, and Moses turned to God. Child of God, turn away from what the enemy is doing. Turn away from what people think about you and turn to God. And the moment Moses turned to God, the Lord told him what he can do. And before we knew it, the Red Sea was separated. And the Bible says, Oh, history was written. The children of Israel walked on a dried land in a sea. Child of God, miracles are about to happen in your life. If you can change your focus, if you can change your gaze, if you can focus on God, rather than focusing on your problems, concerning your problems, see the dominion of God. See the power of God. See what God can do rather than what your ability can do. See what God can do rather than what the enemy is doing. Oh, glory to God. Praise be to God. We have been soaked in Christ. We have been soaked in God. In God. We are one Body with the spirit of the living God. He has given us a new position spiritually. Before we believed, we were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in sin and so we were at disadvantage. But now that we have been made alive in Christ Jesus, we have been given a new identity. We have been identified with Christ in his death, in his burial and his resurrection. And now we have been seated together with him in heavenly places. We've been baptized and soaked in God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, He has given us a new life. Regeneration. A new birth. We've been made anew. You see, when we talk about regeneration, regeneration is the work by which God, the Holy Spirit, makes us spiritually alive. What I've just been talking about. Let us go to the book of Titus. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Titus. Chapter 3. Oh, glory. Glory. Oh, glory. Something good is happening. Something good is happening. Titus chapter 3. And uh, I will be reading from the 5th verse. Titus chapter 3. He says, now concerning our lives that are in Christ Jesus. Oh, let me, let me begin. Uh, let me begin from verses 4. He says, but when the kindness of God, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, when God revealed his love towards us, verses 4, he says, but when the kindness and the love of God, you see, some of you don't know that God loves you, but he loves you. <laughs> some of you think that because of the things that you've done, God is about to destroy you. No, he loves you more. He loves you more than you think. He's kind. He's merciful. He's gracious. He says, but when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior towards man appeared through Jesus Christ, when he appeared to die on the cross, he says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. He says when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Holy Spirit was doing a work beyond what men were seeing outside. When that blood was flowing out of his veins, when they crucified him on that cross, when they pierced his sides, 
And blood no longer flowed, but water gushed out. He says he was taking us beyond our works of righteousness. He was taking us beyond what we can do with our physical bodies. The power of the body, the works of the body were being destroyed. And now he was starting to do a work in us. A work whose foundation is mercy. He says, according to his mercy, he has saved us. According to his mercy, he has delivered us. You see, the things we do in life are supposed to qualify us for death. For the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. But he says, the gift of God, can you imagine? In the middle of sin, the Bible talks about a gift. Where you should be repaid, oh Sheka Bradegaba. Where you should be rewarded with death, where you should be crucified, Jesus Christ died in your place. And now you have been positioned for a reward. And he says that reward is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life eternal. A new life. A clean life. A righteous life. His own life. He says he has saved us. Through the washing of regeneration. We have been washed. We have been made anew. His blood has washed us from all our sins. Oh, Sheka Baradiva. Let us see Romans. Romans chapter 3 and verses 20. I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you're learning something today. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. I will read verses 25. He says, Whom God has set forth as a proper... Talking about Jesus Christ. Let me begin from... Uh, uh, from um, let me begin from... Uh, oh, let me begin from verses 20, 22. He says, Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, all of us had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But hear the good news. But being justified freely. To be justified is to be, is to be declared without fault. As though you have never sinned. He says, and being declared without fault freely. By his grace. Through redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as the payment, as the propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, for God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier. Of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. When it comes to our lives being declared righteous. When, be, when it comes to us being declared the righteousness of God. When it comes to us being declared free of sin. When, be, it, comes, when it comes to us like the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verses one that now there is no condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus. When it comes to us. Actually, we should read that. It will give you a deeper understanding. Chapter 8 and verse 1. He says, Therefore now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, 
spirit has set us free, has made us free from the law of sin and death. So the law of sin and death that sh should have declared us uh, wicked, the law of sin and death that should have declared us to deserve death, death that law the bible says for the law of the spirit for the dictation of the spirit for the instruction of the spirit for the declaration of the spirit has made us free he has made us he has not is not going to make us he has made us free from the law of sin and death the handwriting of ordinances that were against us. He says he has taken away. He has washed away. The charges that were against us. You know some of you are worried about the sins of your grandmother. The sins of your grandfather. The sins and they tell you all these sins are the reason why you are suffering. He says that law that was against you. He says he has made you free from it. The charges that were against us. He says those charges have been wiped away. Now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. We have been washed. We have been made clean. We can stand before God. He says now come boldly before the presence of God. He says now come boldly before the throne of grace. And obtain grace and mercy in time of need. Now because we have been washed, now because we have been set free, now because we have been uh, washed clean from sin, now we can stand confidently before God and ask for whatever we need and he shall give us to us. He says, come boldly unto the throne of God and obtain grace and mercy in time of need. Praise the name of the living God. We have been born again. We have been made anew. We have been born anew. This time not as just children of men, but as children of God. Like he says in John. Chapter 1 and verses 12. As many as believed in him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Now we have become children of the living God. In First Peter. Chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 and verses 23. Chapter, First Peter chapter 1 and verses 23. He says, We have been born again, have been, been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God which lives and abides forever. We have been born again, born righteous, born justified, born forgiven. When you say you're born again, you're not born cast. <laughs> like uh, certain uh, ministers have declared that you've been cast. That you have certain curses that need to be broken. There is no curse on your life that should be broken. Every manifestation of a curse in your life is an illegal work of the enemy. It should never be there. You've been born of the living word of God. You've been born of the promises of God. You've been born of the word of God, which lives and abideth forever. He says, not of corruptible. It cannot be corrupted. You've been born of a nature that cannot be changed. Before you gave your life to Jesus Christ, it was, okay. it was, it was not a question whether you will fail or win. You were bound to fail. You were powerless. But now you've been born again by the incorruptible. You cannot be corrupted with failure. You cannot be corrupted with, with disease. You cannot be corrupted with sickness. So every manifestation of sickness, every manifestation of disease, every manifestation of corruption and decay in your life is a work of the enemy. It is not supposed to be there. It is an illegal work. And so you can stand on your feet and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, you devil, I cast you out. I command you that you have no place in this family. For I was born again. My life is supposed to manifest the blessing of God and not corruption. And so every work of the, of the enemy, every work of corruption, I have nothing to do with you. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare the blessing of God over my life.
We were rust before we were born physically. Alive, but now. We understand that whereas we were born physically alive, yet we were spiritually dead. But that is no longer our story. Now we are spiritually alive unto God. Now we can receive from God. Eternal life has been imputed to us. We have been transferred from the domain of darkness, like he says in Colossians chapter 1. We have been transferred from the control by darkness. We have been, tr been transferred from that place where we were oppressed and we could do nothing about it. We've been delivered. He says he has delivered us in Colossians chapter 1 and verses 13. He says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us. He has placed us in a new place. He has conveyed us into the kingdom, into the dominion, into the control. Of his dear son. The son of his love. That is where we have been placed. We are no longer controlled by darkness. We are no longer. Our lives are no. If there is anything that the devil is doing in your life. It is an illegal work. It is illegal. It is not supposed to be there. For we have been delivered. When he says we have been delivered. That is a past tense. So those of you who are looking for deliverance. From the devil. It is a lie. That's what the devil wants you to see. So he's focusing your life. He's focusing you on a, on, 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 a, on, on a thought that you've, you are bound. But every manifestation of boundness in your life is not true. It is a lie. He says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. So the power of darkness has no power over us. The dominion of darkness has done dominion over us. Witchcraft has no dominion over us. Misfortune has no dominion over us. And he has conveyed us. He has, he has put us in a better place. He has conveyed us in a place where Jesus Christ, the King of glory, is, is in control of our lives. Into the kingdom of his dear son, the son of his love. Oh, glory to God. Lastly, but not the least. Oh. The other work, we said, that the first work of the Holy Spirit is baptism. Soaking us in the presence of God. Soaking us in the life of God. Giving us a new spiritual position. Before we were dead in sin, but now he has placed us and seated us in Christ Jesus. Far above all principalities. Far above. And now we understand that now he has also done a work of regeneration. Giving us a new life. He has made us spiritually alive. We are children of God. We were at one time physically born alive physically but we were spiritually dead. But now we are spiritually alive. We've been positioned in Christ Jesus alive and now the power of darkness has no authority over us now the other thing I want to talk about is the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit the indwelling a new power has been given to us at the moment of salvation we were permanently indwelt by God the Father God the Father took his residence in us. He came to live in us. The Godhead came to live in us. God the Father came to live in us. God the Son came to live in us. God the Holy Spirit came and took his abode in us. Some of you look at yourselves and you think it is hate on the inside of you. No. It is Jesus in you. Hate is a manifestation of the work of the enemy that wants you to focus on. But remember he said that we should set our gaze, we should set our focus on the things above, not on the things on the earth. So at the moment of salvation, we were permanently indwelt by the Trinity, by God. 
He took his abode in us. God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit. Let us see Romans chapter 8. To confirm this, Romans chapter 8. Beginning, I think, from about uh, verses 9. Let me read from verse 9. He says, but you are no longer in the flesh. Remember, now we are in God. You are no longer in the flesh, but in the spirit. <laughs> we are no longer in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, he says, look, there is a certain fact. There is a certain truth. The spirit of God dwells in you. And this is what you must understand, that if indeed he dwells in you. Now, if anyone, if anyone, if anyone does not have the spirit of God in him, he's not his, he's not of God. But if you really know that you are a child of God, then that means the spirit of the living God dwells in you. And if Christ is in you, if the spirit of God is in you, realize he talks about the spirit of God in us. He says, and if Christ is in you, the body might be dead because of sin. The body might be affected because of the sin around us. The body might be affected because of the work of the enemy around us. But the spirit is life. The spirit gives us life because of the righteousness in Christ Jesus. But if the spirit of Jesus Christ, to raise, but if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, if he lives in you, he that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also give life to your physical body through the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So when, when we talk about the healing power of God, when we talk about the supernatural work of God, when we talk about the supernatural ability of God, God working in you, you doing things beyond human ability, you seeing the power of God even manifested in your physical realm, in your physical world, in your body. He says, and if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, if he lives in you because he lives in you, he says, he that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also give life to your physical body. child of God, if there is any pain in your body, what brings about healing is the power of God. Is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives life to your physical body. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but maybe it is your back. Maybe it is your waist. Maybe it is your legs. Maybe it is your, your, your abdomen. Maybe it is your reproductive uh, system. Maybe it is your breathing system. The Bible says that if the Holy Spirit lives in you, if you are a child of God, if you have the life of God in you, if you believed in Jesus Christ and he gave you the Holy Spirit and gave you eternal life, he says he will also give life to the, your physical body. Even right now, he's giving life to your eyes. You who was not able to see well. You was only depending on glasses. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to touch those eyes and they can see better. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to touch your, 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 your breathing system and it breathes this better. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to touch your digestive system and it does a better work. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to give life to your, your reproductive system and you will have children in the the name of Jesus Christ. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to touch your legs. It is possible for the Holy Spirit. Right now, He's giving life to your body. He's giving life to your knees. He's giving His, his life to your hands. He's giving life to every cell in your body. Where maybe the doctors are de declared cancerous in the, whole, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there is life coming to that, that, those cells. There is life coming to your your fiber every fiber in your body, every cell in your body, every joint in your body, every muscle in your body may the Holy Spirit produce his healing power in you in the name of Jesus Christ for those of you who work Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, may he give the life of excellency to you. For those of you who need to, to meet certain targets, I pray for you this morning that may he give you the power 
power to do, the power of excellence, supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ. May you work out things with ease. May you hit those targets in the name of Jesus. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you, may he give life to your physical body. May he have an effect on your physical body. May you have, he have an effect on your physical actions. May he have an effect on your physical works in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the power of God. You see, before salvation, our only source of motivation and power was the sinful nature. Our only source of motivation and power was, uh, was the sinful nature. Our only source of thoughts was the sinful nature. Our only source of power, only all source of ability. We were only able to do what the body could, not, could, could do. And so that is why failure was a guarantee. Sickness was a guarantee. Uh, wickedness, every kind of wickedness, hate, jealousy, all these manifestations of the enemy were a guarantee. But now, that power of sin has been broken. But now, we are able to draw the omnipotency of God, the supernatural ability of God. Let me read for you something in the book of John. Oh, John chapter John chapter 7 and verses 37. I will read for you. John chapter 7. I hope someone is being blessed. John chapter 7 and verses 37. Oh, glory to God. Sorry, I'd gone to John chapter 1. John chapter 7 and verses 37. This is what he said the Holy Spirit would. John chapter 7 and verses 37. He says, Oh God, love the Lord. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, if anyone is in need, he says, let him come to me and drink. <laughs> Are you needy? Are you thirsty? Do you desire more? Do you want more? He says, let him come and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers. Out of your innermost being, he says, will flow rivers of living water. Out of your spirit, out of the inside of you, will flow rivers of living water. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, he says he will give life. Rivers of living water shall flow. Rivers of blessing shall flow. Rivers of healing shall flow. Rivers of wisdom shall flow. Even right now, they are flowing in you. Rivers of understanding shall flow. Oh, Shaka He says, but he spoke this concerning the Spirit of God. Whom those believing would receive. For the spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Or Jesus was not yet crucified. Or Jesus was not yet risen. But now that he has been risen. But now that he has been risen. But now that he has been risen, rivers of living water should flow through you in the name of Jesus. Rivers of love should flow through you in the name of Jesus. Rivers of peace should flow through you in the name of Jesus. Rivers of joy should flow through you in the name of Jesus. Rivers of wisdom should flow through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rivers, the working of the Holy Spirit. Oh, may you see the Holy Spirit work in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 17 and verses 26. John chapter 17 and verses 26 and then we shall begin from there tomorrow. Oh, John chapter 17 and verses 26. Glory to God. He says, I have declared to them your name. Jesus Christ was praying. And he says, I have declared to them your name and will declare it. That the love, that the love with which you have loved me may, may be in them and I in them. You see, this is what Jesus Christ wanted to see. 
before he died. He was praying to the Father that as I have loved them, as I am going to give my life for them on the cross, I want to be in them. I want you to be in them and I want I to be in them. You have loved me and may your love also be in them and I in them. You see, he wants, he wanted to take preeminence, pre presidents in our life. He wants to, 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 to be resident in our life. He wanted to indwell us. He wanted to live in us. That was his desire. He wanted to flow in us. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. In Acts of the Apostles. And how was he going to live in us? He was going to live in us by the Holy Spirit. And so in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. You shall receive. There is something for you to receive in this world. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. So the question is, have you received that power? Have you embraced that power? Do you see yourself with that power? Because God has released it by the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. The fact that he lives in you. He has given you that power. The question is, have you embraced it? He says, rivers of living water shall flow out of you. Have you embraced it? Have you considered that you have it? Have you received it? If you've not yet, receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive that power of healing. Receive that power of prosperity. Receive that power of wisdom. Receive that power of peace. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Embrace it. Walk in it. He says in the book of Colossians, put on the new man. Put him on. Walk in it. Walk in the power of the Holy Spirit today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining in. We shall I will be we shall be praying tomorrow early morning starting at 5 up to 7 a.m. and I will be teaching again and we shall continue from there. Uh, if you've been blessed with this please feel free to send us a message. Feel free to let us know how these messages and these sessions have blessed you. I, I pray for you that you will have a wonderful day at work, that your experiences will be wonderful experiences, that there will be experiences of testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be discouraged and the Lord will work wonders in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed. May you walk in that blessing. May you see the power of God. Amen.